Many Christians are not responding to the promptings of life because they were not taught. They taught them eternal life from a theological perspective. So they quote scriptures, they memorize scriptures, they wrote the exam after the Bible uh, school, they had an A, but they don't know the subject. Because the subject is more organic than it is theoretical. Are you following? There's nobody seated here this morning that will tell me he has not picked many promptings at one point or the other in their lives. The only difference is that for those who responded, the promptings have become stronger. And for those of us who didn't respond, we no longer sense those promptings because they have become weaker. So the level of eternal life you are operating in now is subject to the frequency of promptings you obey and the degree to which you are able to pick them. The more you pick those promptings, the stronger life will become. This is why this subject is not a, theo a theological subject at all. We can learn it from theology, but we must experience it in order to have it. Some of you, when this meeting is over, you will hear life prompting you, wait behind for one hour. You are sensing physical hunger that you need to eat something quick before you die. But life already knows that something is downloading, it has not finished. Maybe it's at 80 percent. If you walk out now, you will cut the program. So life will prompt you, just wait behind after the service. And you will wait for one hour, not because you are doing anything, you are just around. You pray a little, you sleep off. The moment one hour is over, you are now released. You walk out. You may never know what happened to you. But what happened is that favor was downloading. And life didn't want it to be cut off. It's when you go to work tomorrow, you will now discover that before 10 o'clock, you made your highest sale in the last one month. You will be wondering, what happened? Is it because of the anointing oil they poured on my head? It had nothing to do with anointing oil. You plugged to heaven. And the download was completed. Now favor is in your vessel. It was life that made you download it completely. Are you following? So the subject is highly organic. But Christians are not taught. How many programs have you aborted? By now you would have grown to become a seer. But every time your eyes are being opened, you truncated it. Some people are so unlearned in these things that they consciously build distractions around themselves. You come to somebody's house, he has a pile of seasonal movies. When he's exhausted them, he enters Telemundo. When he finishes Telemundo, he enters Bollywood. He enters Nollywood. He enters Hollywood until his life becomes wood. Some people literally look for distraction. They wake up in the morning, they carry their phone, they scroll it, there's no message on WhatsApp. They go to Facebook, they scroll from beginning to end, they refresh, they scroll again, they refresh. When that one stops working, they go to Instagram, they finish. They now go to pictures that they uploaded and start watching their own picture. When it is two o'clock and they start feeling headache, they will start up and do like this. They will look for something and eat. When they eat the very heavy food, they will come and lie down and start watching the movie. They have eternal life. In it is immortality. In it is excellence. In it is glory. But the life is so weak that you can't feel the impact. But you find a man who is healthy. As he's waking up, he wakes up with a song. He just wakes up and the song is already in the spirit. Are we pray? Are we pray? I we pray, oh, I we pray. If I don't pray, Satan will make mess of me. Ah, because of the song, he chews some tongue. So he wakes up and he's still in the spirit. While he's praying in tongues, God pops somebody's name in his mind. As it's going to work, he calls the person, Bro, what's happening? The guy said, I was thinking of you yesterday. There's a contract. Oh. Are you serious? So he woke up into prayer, into contract. And you see his life. He say, what has this man done that God loves him so much? You are insulting God when you are telling him he loves somebody above the other. God loves all of us equally. 
your manifestation is a function of your maximization of what is on your inside you look at somebody you say hey this man God has helped you so you are the one God is not happy so you are succeeding on your own you are quite a strong man you go home you are about to sleep and as you lie on your bed your spirit is not yet ready to rest and you are turning you are turning you say lord what are you saying although your eyes are heavy and you know if you lie down you sleep you go and sit on a chair you are waiting for your spirit to tell you what is happening and as you are there a thought comes to your mind you carry a pen you start writing you finish writing you go and sleep you wake up the next day you see what you write you are shocked it is a plan for the next four years of your life God just downloaded it when you were about going to bed but you are sensitive to the promptings of life this is how men grow we grow by responding to impulses this is why your life cannot be so noisy when you find men of God always isolated and alone it's not because a man of God should package himself and be secluded no there are too many signals we can't miss if you miss some signals, your ministry will be delayed for three years. If you like, do night VG every time. The strategy for three years promotion came, but you missed it. Until another cycle comes, when that strategy rotates back, you will not go anywhere. That's why many are in one spot for a long time. They miss signals. Signals are like flight in the spirit. They know what happened to us this morning. <laughs> There is a one second of your life that will be more relevant than a 10 hours. Time is not the same. It's not the same. You can't miss signals. When I got married, myself and my wife we wanted to travel out of the country for a 10 days honeymoon. And because I was so busy, they were sending me documents, say download this, download that, download that. I now missed one document I needed to download and fill so that my visa can be printed. I thought it was a tourist nation, so visa is on arrival. I thought your assumption can become a punishment. When we got to the airport, we had paid for flight, done everything. They said, where is your visa? I said, ah, it's not on arrival. They said, no, you are supposed to fill this form before you go. Are you serious? I was looking at the plane like this. They said, come tomorrow. Do you know what come tomorrow meant? Come tomorrow meant 400,000 naira. So we didn't just delay for 24 hours. We had to pay an extra 400,000 because we missed the flight. That's how signals work in the spirit. You'll be looking at the plane like this, but you can't enter. It has gone. You didn't pick it. And the next time that plane will come back will be three years. And so everything you are doing, you are doing preparing for the next three years. And if you miss it again, you will see it, you won't enter. It will come again in three years. So what you should have done six years ago, you can do six years later because you didn't pick impulses. God loves all of us the same, but some of us miss too many flights. And there's nothing God can do about it. Because he's the one who designed the system. And so when a man wants to maximize eternal life, he can't afford to meet frequencies, impulses, impression. That's why you will be deliberate about cutting off distraction from your life. Some people think it's about coming to church and praying aggressively for five hours. That prayer can only prepare you to pick a frequency. If you miss it, you have prayed, though, but you will pray for a long time until the frequency comes again. There's a way God helps men. One of it is through impressions through impulses the men who die some of them die. didn't I tell you my experience yesterday I woke up I wanted to go to the airport my spirit was troubled but I didn't wait to process the frequency we were taking off when plane was about to crash I knew I had missed God in discernment so the only thing I said was Lord have mercy when people were praying in tongues I was just looking at them I know if God doesn't show mercy at that time you will pray and still die I've seen people who were attacked, they were praying till they died. It's not because prayer is not powerful, but answer came, you didn't pick it. I just knew 
I knew if that plane crashed there and I died, it would be because I missed the frequency. God gave me deliverance, but I didn't take it. That's how it works. And so the only thing to say is have mercy. I didn't waste my time. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. I knew that one was medicine after death. Are you following? Don't miss impulses. Don't miss signals. Don't miss impressions. The quality of your life depends on them. If I have time, I will tell you how many persons have been suffering in the last seven years in marriage because they missed a signal. The lady did something. The man did something and the Holy Ghost flashed the red light. But you were too carried away with the size of his chest. You were too carried away with the desire for pleasure that you didn't pick those signals. Little did you know that the next 10 years of your life will be hell. The way God wanted to deliver you from that hell was to give you a signal. But you didn't pick it. You want to build life? You must respond to impulses. Signals. They are designed for you and for you alone. Thank you for watching. And if you have been blessed by this message, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. God bless you.